the meeting today of the Community Redevelopment Agency for the City of Tampa is now in session. Councilman uh, uh, Carlson, I believe you are in charge of the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance today. Yep, I'm happy to welcome uh, Reverend McGray de Vega, who actually is my pastor. Go ahead and stand. Um, he's the senior pastor of Hyde Park United Methodist Church in Tampa, a historic 120-year-old uh, church near downtown whose mission is to make God's love real by loving uh, God and loving all people. He has two daughters. The older one is a graduate of Plant High School, and the younger daughter is currently at the IB program at Robinson High School. For more information, go to HydeParkUMC.org. They also run the Portico in downtown, which is a coffee shop, and they have uh, homeless programs and other things. Um, one thing is, uh, uh, b besides being a, a prominent pastor in South Tampa, I mentioned that he's my pastor, and he's helped with uh, prayer patrol for a lot of the ups and downs that in, in my family's life. Um, uh, personal privileges for a second. My, I just found out my son, my youngest son, has a health issue, and so I would ask... Um, uh, Reverend McGray and, and anybody who's watching who believes in uh, God to please um, uh, say a prayer for him. And uh, uh, could we please stand for the invocation and the pledge? Let us join our hearts. Holy and loving God, we pause before the proceedings of this morning to acknowledge our dependence on a wisdom greater than our own a compassion that is deeper than our self-interests, and a sense of order and justice that is greater than our brokenness. So bless this council with your wisdom, compassion, and sensibility, that all that is discussed and decided today will guide the city of Tampa into the fulfillment of its potential, and call and empower all of us citizens into a new spirit of collaboration, humility, and mutual respect, that we might be the community that your love enables us to be. We pray all these things in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Roll call. Dingfelder? Here. Goods? Here. Maniscalco? Here. Vieira? Miranda? Here. Carlson? Here. And Citro? Here. Uh, I've gotten word from Councilman Vieira that he will probably be about 10 minutes due to the rain, and I'm sure that that probably has prompted uh, Councilman Dingfelder to slow down on the roads as well. Our first item agenda is a monthly report from the CAC representative. Damien, you ready? Yes. Good morning, Council. How are you? Good morning. My name is Damien Bill. I am the uh, associate chair or the uh, representative for the Drew Park CRA. Uh, our Drew Park updates are as follows. We continue to have uh, success with the facade grant program. We have awarded uh, two grants in the fiscal year of 19 for the amount of $71,110 in grant dollars, which has led to $189,947 in private sector investments. The Drew Park Fencing Grant Program is active for commercial properties. This grant provides up to $5,000 in matching funds for decorative fencing to improve the aesthetics and security of Drew Park and Drew Park businesses. Uh, the Drew Park Streetscape and Beautification Master Plan identified projects throughout the redevelopment area to eliminate flooding issues, as well as help with the aesthetics and uh, pedestrian connectivity throughout the area. The next project from the master plan is the Tampa Bay Boulevard Lineal Park, which starts at Lois and goes to Air Cargo Road. The notice to proceed was recently issued to McKenzie Contracting to begin construction on the park the park will feature eight feet walkways, additional street parking, historical signage that reflects the history of uh, Drew Park, or uh, the old name is Drew Field, new trees, sitting areas, updated crosswalks, and the addition of sidewalks on the north side of the Tampa Bay Boulevard. The CAC and community are preparing to update the Drew Park Strategic Action Plan 
the CAC plans to work with the community to identify the goals for the area moving forward and updating our plan to reflect those goals. The private sector investments. HCC, Hillsborough Community College, completed their $23 million allied health building. The four-story, 62,670 square foot building will contain a simulated hospital allowing multiple health science programs to work together, creating conditions found in real life situations. I would also like to recognize that the Hillsborough Community College recently celebrated their 50 year anniversary with a series of events. The Stadium Center project is under construction along Del Mabry Highway. The project consists of new Radisson Country Inn and suites that'll be about 147 rooms. We have the Econo Lodge coming with about 121 rooms and the Tyvee Pet Hospital and Veterinary Clinic. The development also includes a renovated 2,300 square foot building for restaurants and retails along with another 5,700 square feet of um, out parcel for retail leasing with about 600 parking spaces throughout the development. 3,200 square feet of new warehouse space and 2,000 square foot of office space were constructed, excuse, excuse me, constructed this year on the corner of Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard and Lois Avenue. The new spaces are all occupied by new businesses. Just across the street from Drew Park along Air Cargo Road in Osborne, CA USA is building a new $40 million, $250,000 square foot facility. They plan to relocate 500 existing employees to the new facility, as well as create about 100 new jobs. CAE specializes in training and simulations in three market segments, including military, commercial aviation, and healthcare. We hope our neighborhoods will help to support the businesses throughout Drew Park. Lastly, for those that are interested in renting or leasing warehouse spaces, there are several spaces uh, of size, varying sizes, that is available for lease throughout the redevelopment area. And that concludes my update from the Drew Park TR. It's a fantastic report. Thank you very much. It's glad to see that uh, everybody down at your CRA, your CAC is doing very, very well and using your money wisely. I'm glad yes, to see about the uh, facade for grant uh, being used. Do you have any comments that you would like to make right now? Well, the only comment I would like to make is that uh, the money that is using that we are using, um, it's best is definitely community oriented because they come to the meetings and they tell us what they want, and we try to alleviate alleviate those issues as well. Not only that, um, the street beautification project is making the CRA look more vibrant, more alive. So, personally, I'd just like to know what time do you hold your meetings? Our meetings are at 5:30 in the afternoon on Tuesday, the first Tuesday of every month. First Tuesday of every month? Yes, sir. Do you feel that's appropriate time for your meetings to be held? Do you get more members from the community at 530 as opposed to any other time? Well, a lot of our uh, community members are small business owners as well. So um, we do get some, when, a lot of times when they come, there are issues. So they make, they make themselves available to the meeting. We could change the time. We, it's, it's, it's always open to poll them to see what would be a better time for them, but 5.30 works right now. And offhand, how many, how many committees do you have? Does, 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 your, does your group have? Committees. Different types of committees. Are people able to join, whether they're board members or not? Are they oh, able okay. to join yes, as yes. committees? Yes, 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 yes. They are, they're able to join where they are. If they're a business owner or a resident, they're able to become, become on the board. And uh, if they, we have a few at large seats that are open, so, I mean, there's plenty of opportunity for people to join the CRA. I thank you very much for that report. No problem. Thank you. Uh, excuse me. I'm council members. Do you have any questions? Question. How many board members do you have on your uh, CAC board? Uh, right now, I believe we're at about five or six. We had some that drop off, dropped off because of work and other issues. So we do have a few open spots. Are you having regular quorums of quorums being met at your meetings? Uh, we haven't had one in probably a couple of meetings just because of the transition from a uh, few members dropping off. Uh, so we've been able to meet, but we haven't had it recorded. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Councilman Carlson. You seem to have your ear to the ground in, in that area. Um, 
if uh, setting aside the budget of the of the CRA, just because you you're in tune with what's happening there, um, uh, if you could, what would be a couple, two or three things that you would do to really transform that area? What what were some big ideas? Um, we'll say beautification was one. We're trying to attract other small businesses because it is a mixed use uh, CRA where with uh, residential and small business. We're trying to attract more small businesses to the to the area as well. So. I think uh, the community would like that, and their biggest thing is they want the businesses to actually work with the residents, you know, to make that a more vibrant and more attractive place for those to settle down. Thank you. Any other council members? Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. McDonough. Good morning, board. Bob McDonough of Mountain Development. I'm, I'm going to make this quick because we have a couple presentations this morning that will lengthen the amount of but some, some highlights, uh, Central Park, the Housing Authority just filed plans for another 282-unit housing development within Central Park. So again, some more affordable housing being developed. Uh, the Channel District, something people have been looking forward to as Publix opens up next month. The uh, Madison Street Park has uh, commenced construction, something the neighborhood has been looking forward to. That was the actual, the original strategic action plan had three plant parks planned for that district, and so this is the third and final plan. Uh, in downtown Herman Massey Park, the plans have been sent out to the neighborhood, and the neighborhood is going to be coming back soon with comments about the redo of that park. Uh, there are several new apartment and condo projects that uh, are in the works, and they're being announced as we, we speak. Uh, you just had the conversation from Drew Park, and again, they're preparing for strategic plan update. Uh, East Tampa CRA, probably the most exciting news for East Tampa is that they had 10 folks uh, respond to the RFP for the lots. And so at their next meeting, they, the group, the CAC, will be figuring out exactly what the criteria is and who will be doing the looking at those uh, RFPs and exactly how they're going to award that. So. That's a big deal, and 10 is a very healthy number of people to, to be able to choose from. So that's a, and uh, the strategic action plan update should be coming along shortly. In the Heights, uh, Soho Capital just announced plans for a new parking garage with a, uh, a hotel. And uh, West Tampa, the begin approving co-sponsorships, they just did another one, which is a taste of West Tampa, which will happen in... Uh, November along with the West Tampa Chamber of Commerce. And uh, Ebor, uh, probably the most important thing right now is you're going to hear a presentation on where they're going with their vision plan. And again, we're, we're seeing with a lot of our CRAs that we've got a, a change of, of CACs, we've got some fresh blood, and people say, you know, that's fine what we did in the past, but we want to do something different now. And the, and the way to do that is to develop a strategic action plan because the the first test of legality about whether or not you can spend money in a CAC is, is it in the plan? So by modifying the plan, it allows you to, to do things you might not have done in the past. Any questions? What CRA is uh, Kid Mason uh, Recreational Center's cross from Perry Harvey Park? Is that in downtown? It's in is downtown. That in Central Park? Be in the downtown CRA? Correct. Mm -hmm. Who's the chairman of, uh, chairwoman or chairperson for the downtown CRA? I, I don't know. Who is it now? Is it? Abby. Yeah. Abby. She, she spoke last month, Abby Doran. Is that Rod back there? Yes. Uh, I'll, I'll be giving you a call, Rod. Okay. Any other members? Any questions? Thank you, Mr. McDonough. Now the YCDC is going to give us the uh, the um, excuse me the vision plan that was aforementioned by Mr. McDonough. Um, Item number three, Councilman Dickfelder. Good morning. I'm Neil Strelo with VHB. Uh, my office is located at 501 East Kennedy Boulevard, Tampa, Florida. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to be with you this morning. In February, uh, VHB was selected by the city and the planning commission to prepare an update to the Ybor City Vision 2020 plan. 
Our team includes Landwise Advisors, who has a re produced a retail market assessment, and Open Workshop uh, for Architecture, who is assisting with the urban form and redevelopment design. Um, the preliminary uh, handout sheet, summary sheet, uh, that is being passed out to you includes uh, an update on our community engagement to date uh, and the planning actions and assessments that we have been undertaking. We've been meeting with staff and the YCDC board um, and their st uh, standing subcommittees. Um, we've had a great turnout at a pu uh, public community workshop on May 15th with over 95 persons uh, in attendance. Um, there was uh, input on issues and an interactive, uh, interactive um, uh, tabletop display uh, that solicited their inputs uh, on the future of eBoard. We've also completed an online survey, uh, which had more than 250 uh, responses in a 45-day period. All of these um, were uh, getting to the major likes and dislikes and issues and concerns uh, that the community um, had. So in the word cloud um, uh, that's being projected, uh, major likes and dislikes, um, architecture and history and restaurants, all are themed uh, items that uh, people uh, really value in terms of the culture and the diversity of the authenticity of the district. Major dislikes uh, that continue to uh, be seen, um, homeless, a, a feeling of unsafeness, um, panhandling, and the need for a variety of, uh, of businesses um, as it moves forward. Uh, an overarching condition that is, uh, that is uh, screening toward this uh, plan update is the uh, proposed or estimated population and employment increase in the next uh, 25 years. Um, by 2045, it's estimated that uh, the population of the district will double, more than double from 2,000 to 4,000 persons, and that employment will also rise by 23%. So some, some of this change is uh, already being experienced in the district and people understand that change. Uh, they, they like the change that is occurring, uh, but they want are concerned. They want to ensure that the authenticity and those important uh, uh, cultural elements are, are protected in the future. Um, as, as you can see on the second handout sheet, um, uh, the table uh, that is uh, being provided and projected there are major planning assessment areas on the uh, first column, the left-hand column, uh, that we were uh, to be looking at in this plan update and SAP. And then major issues or concerns in the right-hand uh, column. And just stepping through those, um, you know, parking availability is continuing to be a, an identified concern. It's really in different locations, and whether it's employees or owners, uh, employees uh, ranked at very high. Uh, the cost of that uh, uh, continuation, the need for improvements to that, the need for improvements uh, for pedestrian and bicycle connections in the district and missing sidewalks, all were um, routinely seen as uh, needs. The desire for improved uh, open space and parks, uh, those connections, types of uses that a more full, fully serviced uh, neighborhood uh, with residential population 24-7 would see uh, being important. Um, a, a stated desire and understanding that there's going to be change and uh, while protecting that core commercial district and uh, the core contributing structures, those parcels um, within the district, that certain areas, uh, specifically to the south along Adamo Drive, are probably going to change into denser and more intense type of uses. Again, seeing uh, the desire to maximize the uh, compatibility uh, for, for that type of change into the district, making sure that it's connected to the district and through the district with pedestrian and, and uh, bicycle and mobility improvements. 
Um, transitions, we, we spoke a little bit about um, the understanding that the Barrio Latino is going to be updating the urban design guides. Uh, that is in process. Uh, and really a discussion about the definition of, uh, of contributing and non-contributing and those types of standards was something that surfaced high um, in, in some of our conversations. Um, Pop-up parties on a law enforcement activity continues to be um, a concern. Um, safety, street lighting, um, both on the aesthetic and the um, connections to parking and community, um, and continued code enforcement actions. Some of the things that you would uh, routinely anticipate to see continue to be uh, seen in the community engagement and discussions that have come to, come to us. There certainly is uh, a desire for increased service and retail needs. Um, one of the elements that was identified in our uh, retail market assessment was that more than 30% of the uses, first floor uses um, along 7th Avenue really are in the office category. Uh, they're not retail uses. And that's first floor. And, and so some of the concerns are that making, trying to incentivize or, or get that retail use uh, to be higher on the first floor um, along 7th as the primary uh, retail commercial district. Um, pharmacy and services, access to fresh food, uh, grocers, Channel District is going to have a new Publix opening and that's within a, a less than a half mile capture for a portion of the district and certainly should add to the um, availability of uh, fresh food and, and access to uh, grocers in the downtown. Our, um, our schedule is to, in the next 45 to 60 days, come back to you, be completed by uh, September uh, with a draft report and, and final report. We're working with staff right now. We're going to be ingraining these and uh, finishing the planning assessments in order to identify those uh, major recommendations coming forward. And as Mr. McDonough said, uh, look for strategic actions uh, that can be carried forward into a five-year plan. I'd be glad to take any uh, uh, questions if you'd have. Any, any questions? Councilman Carlson. Uh, the the issue of bricking, um, rebricking uh, seventh. Yeah. Um, I read about it, but in in the, the stories say that we're waiting on the bricks. Is it, it will it only start when, once we have all the bricks, or what's the status of it? I think uh, uh, I think it's going to take more than that um, in terms of uh, uh, actualizing a rebricking. Um, the conversations that have occurred are really a desire for that authenticity. Uh, people like the brick streets. However, 7th is a major commercial corridor. Um, it, uh, you know, anytime you do a streetscape, regardless of types of materials used, you're gonna disrupt that business environment. And, and that's a concern that was uh, raised in some of the YCDC board uh, discussions. I think there's uh, a, uh, desire and we're looking at it right now with staff of whether we can put out a poll a uh, specific type survey using our online uh, tools to try and gauge the overall support for that type of improvement maybe it's accents like 21st and 22nd uh, that just were completed by DOT you know the crosswalks and the intersections those types of improvements but it's a expensive and long-term uh, uh, goal. What do you think the total cost of it is? I don't have a total cost. I think, if I recall, three to five million. Um, and that was a generalized number that staff found um, in the uh, lead up to the support of the YCDC board. So it's substantial. Yeah. I, I, I'll. I won't belabor the point. I look forward to meeting you and talking to you sometime. The, um, uh, my, my firm has just moved its office there as soon as we get off our permitting. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. three months late. But um, uh, 
I, I think that with all the changes going on there, um, uh, eBoard really is becoming the the creative and innovation district of Tampa, and it's um, you know really the third business district. It's it, and and it's a place to live, and so it it seems like it's evolving into something new, connecting with the history, but but becoming something entirely different. And it, it I think it's going to be a major economic engine for our region. Mm -hmm. So um, look forward to being part of it. Thank you. Yeah. In in addition to that. Um, Council member, the part of our assessment is looking at ADA connections through those uh, throughout the district, and and there's a variety of step down curbs or or um, crossings that have been made in time that don't really meet the intent of the uh, statutory requirement currently, and so some of those uh, may be intermittent or uh, interval improvements that could be made uh, while larger. CIP type projects are evaluated. Councilman Dickfelder. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, on the lighter note, I notice on the, the major likes and dislikes that, that uh, certain things are on both sides of the list. Clubs, <laughs> bars, and chickens uh, have managed to make, uh, to, to land on as likes of some people and dislikes <laughs> of others. I think it's kind of, that's sort of tell, telling of, of the Ebor in our society as a whole. Um, on a serious note, when I, I've been through these kind of visioning processes before, and um, and I know it's important to reach out to stakeholders, and that's what it looks mm -hmm. like you're doing when you go out to these groups, including the YCDC board, et cetera. I didn't see us on the list of, of potential interviews and, and comments and, and uh, suggestions, uh, as well as the mayor, um, mm -hmm. all all eight of us, perhaps key players uh, in, you know, in these future decisions. I, I would be glad to um, uh, meet with you. Um, well, not, not me. And no, all, I mean, all of us make, it, make the offer uh, to meet, certainly. Yeah, I, I just think it, it, it does make sense. Um, so that's, that's my input on that. Keep up the good work. Councilman Goose. But, uh, oh, he, meet with us individually. Me, no, I, I understand. Meet, meet with us individually, yeah. And, a, and well, you know, per your first um, observation, we, we didn't glean the the likes and the dislikes. This is the what we've heard. No, I understand and, the and, process. And I think new new residents have a different um, concern about chickens than um, <laughs> existing residents. Well, you know, Ebor has changed. I can remember the days I used to be on 7th Avenue patrolling and the crowds were all in the street. You know, when I go out of town, people always say, How, how's that Ebor place? So everybody's dying to get into town, but it's the Ebor. It's changed a little bit from a, I call a party <laughs> atmosphere entertainment district to a mild manner type district now. But my question rises when you talk about retail. What type of retail are we talking about? Because when I talk to people, they're saying that they like to get down there, but the, the rent is so high down in Ebor. Mm -hmm. So how, how are we working to manage that, or what's any plans for that? Because uh, some people would like, love to be down there and may right. not have that high, high capital to be in Ebor, but right. would love to be down there. So how are we addressing those concerns? Uh, council member, you, you hit the, the key. Um, it, it's part of the, part of the challenge. Uh, 21st and 22nd is also a, a area of commercial zone uh, that recent improvements have been made and and really you haven't seen a lot of redevelopment yet along those corridors. Um, part of our conversation at the YCDC board uh, was uh, meeting earlier this week was whether there's public lands, um, the public private partnership, how how lands can be leveraged for multiple gains, community gains parking lot fields, if, if structured parking comes, if retail space in those or affordable attainable housing as part of the program to deliver additional spaces for really a private, private interest. Um, uh, the success of the district is really privately driven um, uh, by those uses. Uh, so there, there may be some opportunities where leveraging of assets um, or incentives uh, could could be made in particular areas to see the results that you may want. Well, it, yeah, that's it's really a concern of mine because I've had several people talk to me about this, and I'd like to get down there, but I just can't afford the rent to get right. down there. But my other question leads to, uh, it goes down to 26th Street, correct? Yeah. 
Yeah. What are we doing with that? What are we doing from that stretch from about 20th Street down to 26th? We got anything planned to go on down there because it's blighted down there. Yeah. We have a CRA. So why haven't we start to move to that angle? Of yeah, East, the, East. Uh, I know that from the archway lights and the physical improvements of 7th, are being um, being discussed to take it all the way to the eastern end, the gateway at 26. Uh, YCDC board members reaffirmed to me that there is a, um, a gateway design for the east end uh, to memorialize like the west end of uh, Binusio. Uh, not an overarching arch, but still a theme that you are entering a special place and, and this is part of our CRA district. And so I think that programming uh, certainly is important, and if you look at some of the mapping that we'll be bringing forward, missing sidewalk linkages are predominantly in Ebor 2 on the east side. Uh, there's just not a, you know, the right-of-way is there. Uh, sidewalk improvements should be made, um, and it's part of programming to ensure that those basic services are there, and then the uh, supportive incentive-based uh, uh, or design-based uh, improvements. Well, I'm hoping that we can reach out to probably some of those little smaller businesses that have been there a long, long time, remember to our facade grants, making sure that they, they know they can Aware. be a partner of the YCDC, making sure that they can be a collaborative effort in, in getting some development down there in as well, because I've heard that we, we no one ever talks to us. So I'm hoping in the future that we can get the YC to go down and maybe knock on some doors, invite them to me, uh, put some surveys down on that end to see what we can do uh, to, to make them feel that they're part of the neighborhood as well. So that, I'm hoping that's, that's a part of the plan. Good, good ideas. Thank you, Very sir. Much. Any other questions? Statement, gentlemen, if you don't mind. Um, I was part of the YCDC. Thank you for this report. Mm -hmm. Thank you for, uh, for uh, giving us the vision that the citizens are looking for. Uh, I was part of helping Ybor City become the community that it once was, a livable, walkable, business-oriented, with entertainment and social and community clubs. And so I'm, I'm glad to see that things are really working down in Ybor City. Uh, thank you to YCDC staff, and uh, it was always my pleasure to work with them. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you so much. At this time, um, we are going to be doing uh, some work with legal, and it may take a while. I would. Would you entertain a motion that we defer the legal discussion until we finish our regular business? That way, we don't keep staff and all that kind of stuff. I was. That that's fine with me. I was going to actually ask just for public comment before we went into uh, the legal. But if you would like to make that motion, Councilman Dinkfelder, thank you. Uh, yeah. I'll second that. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Is, uh, excuse me, Council, would that be fine with you? Absolutely. Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up we will have public comment. Each person wishing to speak on public comment will have three minutes to do so. Mr. Chairman, I apologize for running a little late with the rain. Um, did we finish number two? Yes, we did. Uh, well, I might. As long as Mr. McNunn is here, I might ask him to circle back and ask a couple of questions. But go ahead and carry on with this. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Dinkfelder. Please, come public comment. Good morning, Councilman. My name is Rafael Pizano, P-I-Z-A-N-O. Uh, congratulations to all re-elected council members, those that are new and those that are returning. Thank you for your commitment to the city. Uh, in relation to the resolution that passed June 13th, uh, 2019, the Cuban ambassador visited Tampa. Uh, he kind of did a walkabout, see how he can better relations with his government and, and city, Tampa. I would, I speak for the Cuban exile community and the Venezuelan community. I work with different humanitarian organizations. They've reached out. Several of the councilmen have reached back. They're going to have a sit down. Thank you. Today, I chose to spoke as an, speak as an American. I'm a first responder. I also was a U.S. Army veteran. Today, I want to speak a few thoughts and give a viewpoint from that standpoint. I would like to share, as a first responder, things that we can keep in mind when the ambassador and others from the Cuban regime come to visit. This gentleman here was a first responder. He was murdered. His name is Forster Warner, trooper. He was murdered. His murderer is harbored by Cuba. To date, they won't budge or do anything or speak about giving back 
that criminal so he can face charges and the families can have some type of closure. This is one. That was his little boy. He was shot with a service revolver by that murderer and he's harbored by Cuba. Another first responder will be Robert Rosenblum from New Mexico. His murderer still walks the streets freely in Cuba. So my thoughts as a first responder that serves proudly the city of Tampa is when this ambassador comes here, he seeks business ventures, he seeks different opportunities for him and his government, which is not a democracy. I understand that we'll entertain those things, but if we can keep these things in mind, considering that the families are still looking for some type of closure, I, as a first responder that serves the city of Tampa, and as an American, wanted to speak on that part. I think we should, it's important to keep that in mind. Last year, a delegation, or a year and a half ago, a delegation by the former chair went to Cuba. And they said it was no big deal. Councilwoman Yoli Chapin. My concern as a prior service veteran is McDill Air Force Base. CINCOM is a think tank for the DOD Department of Defense. What is the threat between Tampa and Cuba? And between 2005 and 2012, a spy network for the regime was apprehended. A person was physically caught at McDill trying to do intelligence gathering. When Ms. Chapin went to Cuba, this was a threat that I considered a threat. She took this picture in Cuba with Rene Gonzalez. He served over 13 years in a U.S. federal prison. His crime, he spied on U.S. Southern Command. So if these are the people that are coming to Tampa, we have a critical think tank like McDill Air Force Base Syncom. Our prior chairwoman visited Cuba, and here she is in a photo op with Rene Gonzalez, who did federal prison time for spying on U.S. Syncom. These are the concerns that I have as a veteran and as a first responder. I don't have much time to speak today, but I look forward to sharing more details with each of you when we have an opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, please. Benteznot, Tampa, Florida. That's what the gentleman said is very interesting. And it's interesting from the perspective of you have to put life in perspective. The United States have had a blockade in Cuba for decades, starving the people out. And he's concerned about one or two or 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 people in the whole country, you know, is suffering. And people are trying to restore some dignity and relationship. And then quite naturally, it's going to be people on both sides. And that's all good. But what I'm here to speak about today is the trickery that's used against African people right here in this city. And no progress. If you look around, they're talking about three to five million dollars for the street, 7th Avenue and what's going to happen with that. And go a little further down throughout Belmont Heights and Jackson Heights in West Tampa and see what? There's no advancement for African people at all, none whatsoever. A $40 million park, Riverfront Park, and um, the older people just don't get it. They just don't get it. Parks aren't used in that way anymore. Most kids now are in their computers or they're in the gym somewhere or the fitness center doing their own thing. But that's the way the money is spent. And black people are living in complete squalor, complete squalor, ride around and see how African people live in this city. And as a matter of fact, they don't want us in the city, so they're pushing us out in places that we've never been. Something have to be done about that. It's a certain kind of hate they have for African people, certain kind of hate they don't even like to hear African people talk of our conditions. It's a time, I think, two representatives was right here when I was arrested right here and taken and given a jail sentence for just trying to speak, not threatening anyone with violence, not making any personal threats or citywide threats or national threats, just speaking about the conditions of African people and the white people hate it so much they put you in handcuffs and put you in jail just for speaking. And now when you speak, they look at you like you're stupid. They look at you, they say, oh, you're radical but they all know the suffering of African people and what's going on inside our communities. And it's no degree of respect. You see it right here every single day. No degree of respect. You see people serving people, grown men. You see women serving them coffee and serving them water and other things, and it's an insult. You see firefighters stand right here, police officers stand right here to get an award. When the police officers get their award, they walk out and the firefighters get their award and nobody even recognizes them. You see a chairperson that tells people when they say something in the audience or acknowledge someone, no, you can't do that. Why you can't do that? But when they're giving their awards, they're doing it all the time. It's about respect. And African people, black people, we need respect in this city. 
plain and simple. Thank you. Next, please. Good morning, City Council. <clears throat> when I was here last Thursday, I um, showed pictures regarding the existing conditions of affordable housing. Just like the gentleman said, they don't give a damn about us. These are the marks I've had on my body for conditions living in um, affordable housing. When I came down here Thursday and spoke and showed the pictures about affordable housing, this letter showed up at my door. Now, they don't spoke about eviction. Why you want to evict me? Your mission is to keep me off the street. I pay the rent. You raised the rent. I said I couldn't afford it. Then they came back with the letter. Trickery. They don't give a damn about the black people. And I asked more than once. I come in here. I'm sick. It's raining like mad dog. Ain't nobody in here speaking about me. Ain't nobody going to speak about the everyday people. I'm the everyday people. The mold and mildew in the apartment is bad. The smell in the apartment is bad. I smell a man deodorant every day. I leave the house every day. I pay the rent once a month. I only been there since April. What do I need to do? Keep crying? Why I got to keep begging? 1997, I left Florida. I wouldn't marry a military person. Hillsborough County City owed me this $38,726.83. Now you give me that right there, I'll come down here and speak about the issues and stop having my own personal experience. But right now I have my own personal experience. I need my money. It's mine. It's a court order document. It's in Hillsborough County. All the information is right there. I even filed a caveat. They want to know why your dumb ass know something about a caveat. There it is. I need to know why. I got to keep going through this. I don't want to go through this. Now, somebody went and spoke to somebody about this situation when I was in here Thursday because now they don't back off about this eviction. But I don't believe it's going to be a back off because retaliation and bullying of these nonprofit organizations and these profit organizations, they come in here, like they say, building up all this beautiful cash. I was born and raised here in Ebor City. I used to eat at the scattered warehouse. I was able to work and go spend money like every damn body else around here. Now I can't do nothing but just sleep on the streets? Why? I didn't come here for that. I graduated from high school. I traveled around the world. I know better. I seen better. Why is this the only thing I can have in Hillsborough County in Tampa, Florida? Why is this all I can have? Thank you. Ma'am. Ma'am. Yes. You come back here, please. Can you give us your name, please? My name is Verlene Drayton. Thank you, Ms. Drayton. Thank you. Is there anyone else that we should speak during public comments? Thank you. Let's move down to. Mr. Chairman, can I ask a couple of questions on item two with your permission? We'll do that later if you do not mind, Councilman sure. Dinkfelder. Thank you very much. Move to item number five. Uh, that I'm asking you to receive and file a quarterly update on the finances of the CRAs. All in favor say aye. Question. Uh, Councilman, item, hang item on number one six. second, Mr. Yes. McDonough. Councilman yes, Dinkfelder has a question. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good morning, Bob. Um, I did have a few questions. On page 20, um, it speaks to the East Tampa uh, CRA environmental detective. I know yes. we've had the detective uh, on board for a long time. Yes. I'm just um, wondering if we, if we ever get reports on on the detectives, you know, overall uh, productivity and success, yes. and not asking for it today, but perhaps come back uh, next month and and uh, you know give us some updates. We're spending, it looks like we spend I don't know, 168 a, a year, 168 thousand a year or something like that um, on that program. Absolutely, because we do get a track of the number of summonses and um, actual court actions that take place. Yeah, I figured we probably did. Yes. Um, also, the going back to the CRA, the Madison Street improvements. Yes, Madison Street oh, Park. Oh, excuse me, Madison Street Park. Yes. Um, it looks like we have a $2 million, this is page 13 uh, uh -huh. for the board. Looks like we have a $2 million projection. 
potential expenditure on the Madison Street Park. Um, I don't. I for one, I don't know if I've seen any kind of design or plan for for that park. Um, I'll be happy to get it for you. That was something that was uh, vetted through the neighborhood. Spent quite a bit of time on it. I, I'm and sure. And actually, was um, it was approved quite a while ago. Uh, the reason that it's just going under construction now was that the publics in the building next door were under construction. They wouldn't want to do that in the middle of a construction site, which okay. is why con construction is commencing now. Uh, yeah, either make it a presentation here or if you want to give it to us individually, that's Certainly. fine. Certainly. Yep. You know, it's a lot of money and I it think is. we just want to make sure what we know exactly what we're spending that money on. Um, on page uh, 26, well, I sort of had a generic question about the, um, the heights. We used to call it the heights. Yeah. CRA. Uh huh. Um, I don't know what it's called now. Tampa Heights Riverfront. Tampa CRA. Heights Riverfront. Um, so th that's an unusual CRA in regard to, as far as I can tell, it's, is it one single property owner? That's correct. For the entire project? Correct. And, I, and I, I'm familiar with the history. I think I was on this board when we... Councilman Dinkfelder, I hate, I hate to interrupt your question, but we do have a motion waiting to be... Uh, well, the motion, my motion... Would this be a well, separate and different motion? We're, we're, we're waiting on, on a motion to be voted on for this TIF. Right. Am I, am I correct? Uh, you're, you're, they're just receiving and following that quarterly report. Um, yes. Well, please. let me just finish this one question. We'll Thank start. you. Okay. Um, but it is come out of this budget because we have a seven hundred thousand dollar. It says we've collected seven hundred thousand dollars. It's taken us seven years to collect seven hundred thousand dollars. We have a balance. We collected seven hundred two. We have a balance of six ninety. I'm just wondering, have we looked at the real benefit, uh, you know, cost benefit analysis of of doing that CRA, of having that CRA, of retaining that CRA? It's a big picture question because mm -hmm. there's obviously a lot of moving parts and you have a, a significant, what appears to be successful project in the armature and everything that's surrounding the armature. Right. So I don't want to hurt that project, but at the same time, it's like, does that project even need us? Well, yes, they do because actually they, they part of the, uh, the history of that is that they are, uh, I think it's 76% of the the funds that are collected are remanded back to them for debt service. So th this is a long history. It was a. Uh, I'll tell you what. It's a long. It's a long answer. I'm, I'll meet I'll, with I'll you. I'll meet with you individually. And Absolutely. We'll talk about it. Okay, yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Have the, uh, made the motion uh, you did make the motion. Yes, motion made by uh, Councilman Maniscalco, seconded by Councilman um, uh, Vr. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, agenda item number six. Item number six is uh, moving money back from the on-demand shuttle service to the Channel District CRA fund. When the CRA originally agreed to fund the uh, or participate in the funding of the shuttle service, we were uncertain as to whether or not we were going to be funding for three or four years. And uh, Hart is now going to be picking up the funding of that. And so the monies that had been allocated previously are moving back into the CRA because it's no longer being funded by the CRA. Pleasure, Council. Uh, sorry, Councilman Dinkfelder, do you have a question? Yes, sir. Um, that sounds great. Is, do you know if, that's, if Hart is anticipating using the offer transportation money to do that? That was their original plan, but they have actually other monies earmarked specifically for that. Okay, and that relates to seven and eight, I think. That's, that's correct. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Pleasure of the uh, second. second. Motion made by Councilman Maniscalco, Maniscalco excuse me, Guido. Uh, seconded by uh, Councilman Vieira. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number seven. Item number seven is the exact same, except it's for the um, downtown. Second. Or move that, move that item. Six. Motion made by Councilman Dinkfelder, seconded by Councilman Goods. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. Item number eight 
is moving money from the infrastructure fund to land. Again, the, the CAC in East Tampa has expressed an interest in becoming more involved in affordable housing. And so they're setting aside money to be able to purchase land to do affordable housing. And that's what this moving of money is for. Motion made by Councilman Maniscalco, seconded by my Mr. Uh, excuse me, Councilman Goods. All in favor? All in, any opposed? Motion carries. Item number nine. We have uh, two appointments for the West Tampa CRA, and it's two ex officio, one from the West Tampa Alliance and the West Tampa Chamber of Commerce. So we're asking for um, the approval for Mr. Derek Jackson and Mr. Serrano. So moved. Second. Motion uh, made by Councilman Dinkfelder, seconded by Councilman Goods. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number 10 is the uh, appointment of East Tampa CAC membership. And again, in, in the East Tampa program, the CAC approves it and basically is looking for ratification from the CRA board. So moved. Second. Motion made by Councilman Dinkfelder, seconded by Councilman Goods. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And last and certainly not least is a facade grant at 2701 North 16th Street, which is facade work on one of the original cigar factories. Councilman Dinkfelder. So, I don't know if this came up before I arrived, but I don't think it's this cigar building, but the one up the street. The like one that's it, being painted? That was being painted mm -hmm. this week. It's, ama it's amazingly disgusting yeah. um, that they can do that. It's a disgusting uh, that they can get away with defacing one of our 20-something cigar factories that are left. Uh, I raise it because I don't, I don't know if this particular factory in this building is protected, is it? Um, I am not certain of that. I can find out for you. But I can tell you that uh, several years ago, the cigar factory in question was uh, brought to city council for local protection and was not granted by the city council. That was probably 10 years ago. And, right. and council decided not to take that action. Right. So I, I read in the paper that I, or I read online that I voted to protect it, um, but I lost that vote. So th that, that precludes the city from having the ability to to do that. Yeah. Well, it precluded it then. It doesn't preclude, it, preclude us futuristically. Correct. And that's a di another subject for another day. Um, but in regard to this project, yes. so in this case, we spend how much? $50,000. $50,000, and they match it at least? Probably 10 times that. OK. Yes. So but then how do we get assurances that they will continue to uh, observe the historic nature of it we if it's a, not protected. We hold the lien on that property for five years. And so but the we, lien doesn't include historic protection. Correct. Um, this, is, this is the Newman family who have owned this cigar oh, factory this is the for Newman a number family. of years. Excuse me. And, and okay. so again, I, I think that we're talking of a horse of a different color. I thought this was West Tampa. This is mm -hmm. not a developer from out of state. This is the Newman family. Okay. Well, I apologize. And no, no offense to the Newman family. I didn't realize which building this was. Yeah. All right. Thank you. As related to all the buildings that, are, right. that aren't protected, I don't believe our facade grant program goes that step further to right. demand no. historic preservation. Our, our facade grant can That's only not. apply to specific applications for specific structures. It can't go wider than that. This mm -hmm. is a contract between one party and another. Thank you. What is this board's pleasure on this resolution? Surely. Councilman uh, uh, Carlson. Um, I, I guess I'll go along with this because it's been processed already, but I 
completely philosophically disagree with these facade grants. Um, uh, I don't know what we need to do to relook at them, but um, with the several that have come before us just seem like gross waste of money. Um, uh, I, the original, if the original intent was to save historic buildings or revitalize an area, um, you know, fifty thousand. We we did one for fifty thousand a couple weeks ago, um, and uh, you know, we could hire a full time staff person or do all kinds of. Think of what we could do in these in these communities. You know, the last mayor, uh, when arguing to raise the ad valorem tax. Uh, held up um, after school programs, and I know it's it's a different area, not CRA, but it, I think we have to hold everything up against that kind of test. What what else could we be using the money for? And if we're using, if we're giving fifty thousand dollars or or what these large amounts of money away for things that we that really aren't that needed, um, uh, it seems like we don't need these CRAs in the first place. That we should be spending the money somewhere else. So I I, I hope that we have a conversation sometime about. Uh, where we're spending money, but in particular with this program, because it seems like a waste. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Councilman Good. I, I, I see where Mr. Carlson is going, but I have to disagree in some light of that. You know, in East Tampa, especially the middle core, uh, and even I complain now that sometimes the criteria is still not meeting some of the people who actually need the help. There are some people who actually need the help, especially in my district, especially that middle core who don't sometimes want to fix their place up, but they don't much have the money to even match the grant to fix their place up. So I'm trying to find ways in my mind how we can help people who don't have the money and put them under some kind of contract or lien to where to beautify my East Tampa. So I have to disagree that those who have used it, which or you know, fish market, some of the others who have put up the money, who had the, the means to help beautify 15th Street a little bit. So I've got a, some major corridors that really we need to help and look at how we can change the facade grant rules to probably help some of these people to fix up my major corridors because they're a mess. Councilman Dinkville. Mr. Carlson, um, it's funny you, you mentioned that because when I was reading through this last night as related to the downtown CRA, I noticed that one of the uh, objectives of the downtown CRA was to start doing facades, the facade grant program in the downtown area. And I'm thinking to myself, that's kind of weird, because if you got enough money to even own and pay taxes on your downtown property, why is the CRA helping you with $50,000 for that facade? I, that was one of my, actually one of my questions as related to item two today. So I think you bring up a good point, but let's not throw out the baby with the bathwater, because I think there are certain areas like East Tampa and West Tampa where the facade, the facade program is working, and, and, and maybe Drew Park, uh, where it's working and the buildings are more modest, more family owned, that sort of thing. And, and maybe we can stick with the, some of those programs. And then we can revisit others, like Channel Side or Downtown or what have you, uh, to say, eh, that's probably not an appropriate area for the facade program. Maybe maybe we have to talk about this in new business, but I wish we could have a discussion about tightening the rules on these things and trying to make sure they're effective, um, and not to criticize anybody who's applied for them. Um, you know, the, these applicants are great people and they've contributed a lot to the community. But if the grant exists, people will apply for it. But but we should be helping uh, the community with people who who need it and can't afford it or in blighted areas. Um, but doing this in downtown would be absurd. Doing it in the core of Ebor, you know. E e Ebor, you, to just to own any piece of property, you can't buy property in Ebor in the core part of it because it's too expensive and nobody wants to sell. Um, so you know, East Tampa or wherever, let's look at at tightening the rules. The other thing is, think about um, we were talking about properties that could that uh, uh, housing could go on. Um, you know, if we do ten of these uh, over a few months, that's uh, five hundred thousand dollars. How many properties could we buy that could be used for for low cost housing? I, mean, there, we, I think we have to compare. <clears throat> we're fiduciaries of this money, and if not for the CRA, this money could be used in any neighborhood to try to do all the things that we want to do, and we have to hold up against that standard. We can't just spend it on things because we have the money. Uh, if I may, Councilman Dinkfelder, please take over for now. Um, sure. Since I am in the middle, uh, I understand both points. However, I still challenge any member of this board or this association to go to a CRA meeting. I have seen wonderful work that these facade grants have done not only for businesses but for res uh, residences in Drew Park, 
in East Tampa, in Ybor City, where one business has been made to look better and the business next door says, we should think about doing this, which then <coughs> brings more businesses to this area. I like these facade grants. Yes, we can tighten our belts here and there. However, these facade grants are needed. Again, what is the, um, what is the, uh, I'll move the uh, item 11 you. if we hadn't, Thanks. if we hadn't moved it. And again, thank you. Apologize to the Newman family. Uh, uh, definitely didn't realize that it was that building. I thought this was a Howard Avenue building. Again, one more time, if everybody on this board would like to go down to a CR meeting, CRA meeting in any part of this wonderful town, I asked them to do so. I think legal counsel told us not to last no. time. No. You will be enlightened on that point. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, I put all of them on breath. my calendar and then I pulled them off at the last meeting. Uh, we have a motion made by Dink. Councilman Dinkfelder, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Now we get to the Mr. McDonough. Did you have something you wanted no, to add? No, sir. That concludes my report. Thank you for your report. And I did have those questions. On item two, you said we were deferring it till. Thank you very much for reminding me, Councilman Dinkfelder. Mr. McDonough, can you come back up to the podium? Certainly. Thank you. Mr. McDonough, somebody whispered in my ear something about House Bill 9, uh, which I'm not familiar with. Um, they said it, it um, might have impact on, on CRAs. The only, the only bill that I'm aware of that was passed that uh, impacted CRAs had to do uh, there, was a, there was a broad range, and I think I reported to this board uh, after it was passed, that we comply with every single requirement of the bill already. Okay. You think we, that we, was nine? I believe so. Okay. Um, I, I, again, everything is on our web page that is required. That we have the audit, that our board gets ethics training. And so We've been a little bit ahead of the curve in a lot of the CRAs and making sure about transparency and reporting. All right. Um, just, I'm going to run through these questions real fast. Uh, Council, I appreciate your indulgence. The um, one, and one at somewhere in the reports that spoke to the uh, October meeting of the Florida uh, Redevelopment, the FRA, the Florida Redevelopment yes. Association in uh -huh. Tampa. Yes. And we are the host city. Correct. Um, is this board involved, uh, invited, involved, um, you are always encouraged, in have you spoken to that? Um, actually, you'll be in get invitations. We actually um, pay the membership or the, the fee for people to attend and, and the board is always invited as well as members of our CAC and the, the boards of each of the CAC, so yes. All right, so you'll give us, you'll give our staff members individual yes. de details about the event? And Correct what we might do to participate and welcome the rest of the, mm -hmm. the state. Yes. Okay. It is a great meeting I have attended and it, it is very informative. All right. All right. So I'm just going to whip through some of these. Uh, um, in regard to the, uh, and you might want to have your book, Bob. Yeah. Uh, the downtown CRA. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've raised this point before. This council several years ago abdicated its involvement in the rezoning process for downtown high-rises okay the downtown high-rises used to come to city council for rezoning as a as a pd and we got a good look at them and we got to discuss them and and for some reason over the last x number of years ago the this city council decided not to do that and has given it to staff and i've made a motion to re revisit that with which you guys uh agreed to the reason I mention that is, is on, under the downtown CRA report, you mentioned three or four new buildings Correct. that are going up, that are in the process, that are in rezoning. Um, since we don't see those anymore, um, maybe a presentation on what's going on downtown with maps and discussions Certainly. and photographs and, mm -hmm. and an update would be helpful, not only to us, but to the community. So I'm sure you'll be good with that. Certainly. Okay. On the next page, uh, Drew Park CRA speaks to a fence grant program. I don't know what a fence grant program is. It says Drew Park facade grant and fence grant. 
Oh, excuse me. Um, again, because Drew Park has a lot of light industrial, right. um, they had a fair amount of uh, businesses that, that could be more attractive. And so the community, as well as the previous board, voted to allow uh, funding for fences, basically acting as a screen to help beautify. There were some junkyards there. There were some heavy equipment operators. And so uh, much the same way as a facade grant, it's, it's adding fencing to screen the, uh, the industrial yards. So it's the intent is an opaque, some sort of opaque Correct. fence under certain situations or, or what? Um, basically, it has is there to, criteria. It, it, yes, and it has to do mostly with appearance, what goes on behind it, and the length of it, and its visual uh, application, and exactly where it is. Okay, not just like I got a dog in my yard nope. and I want to put a fence up. No. Okay. Um, so I guess we'll see these as they arise. Yes. Uh huh. All right. Um, in regard to East Tampa CRA, and Ed Johnson is here. He's been a loyal employee of the city and for many, many years. Um, Impressive number of uh, facade grants. Uh, Councilman Goods was mentioning 23 approved grants for 700, 730,000, 40,000 dollars, and leveraging two and two and a half million dollars. It sounds really good. Um, the next line speaks to 70 businesses created, which is great. But then it only speaks to eight new jobs. I thought that was a weird number. Perhaps a typo. Perhaps I don't know. Ed? Good morning, Ed Johnson, East Tampa CRA manager. Those numbers that are reflected there are from the Small Business Development Center, who we contract to uh, provide uh, workshop development for folks, and they do some, they actually do some door-to-door uh, -door calling on businesses in our community to be able to gather this, this information through that process. And yes, the, the, the number that you see there is correct. That is, that is their reporting. Uh, Isn't that strange, strange number? Not necessarily. You know, we, we don't believe that that's not necessarily the, the case. You know, you're, you're out there servicing and uh, uh, servicing the small business community. You're being able to connect and contact with individuals, but you know, they have to take the responsibility to be able to go through that process. And sometimes it's very limited when you go, when they go through the, the, uh, the process of going through the classes and things of that nature. Sometimes we get good results and sometimes we don't. But we want to actually report the numbers that we actually see uh, as a result of the work that they do out there. Mr. Dangfield, if you mind. Is that program still being funded in this upcoming budget for the East Tampa CRA? That's correct. It's, it, it's, 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 an, it's an item that is on, in the draft budget. The budget isn't approved yet. You know, the CAC, budget is approved by you during well, I, I the, the annual CAC budget process. I understand, put that back in the... That's correct. I, I'm, 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 I'm sorry to hear that because I'm going to be honest with you, Dean Feather, I'm glad you looked at that because I sat on that CAC board, CAC board and I didn't think that that program that was effective at all. I won't be candid with you. I didn't see the drive. Uh, you have one person who's doing that job. I didn't see the numbers increase on that, and I was, I'm surprised that it is back in there because I, I thought the board was talking about taking that out and looking at another avenue, but that's surprising. They're the board uh, as far as that goes to want that, but I just thought that was not a good program that was really doing a great job. Well, at the end of the day, we signed that contractor agreement with them that's correct. on an annual basis. Yes. When does that annual come up? In our, during our budget cycle. So they're, they're committed through our particular budget cycle, which uh, starts October 1 and ends September 30th. All right. so, so in this budget cycle over the next two months, we can revisit that. Yes. Mr. Chairman, I got one or two other questions. Um, in regard, thank you, Ed. Uh, in regard to Ybor City, I just wanted clarification, and perhaps this is more from legal. It's uh, in the middle of the page, it says the YCDC board via letter to city council supports Ebor, Central Ebor's ownership request to amend the 1999 uh, Central Ebor development agreement, et cetera, et cetera, regarding, and that's the AMC issue. I think we've all been briefed on it. Um, I just want to make sure our legal counsel that, you know, at some point we're going to receive and file this document, I want to make sure that that doesn't bind us or otherwise commit this body 
to a vote that the YCDC board took as related to that agreement? YCDC wears two hats. One of them is its own corporate entity. The other one is acting as the CAC for Ybor City. In its function as the CAC for Ybor City, it serves only an advisory or in an advisory capacity to the CRA board. So no vote taken by YCDC uh, really binds the CRA who is free to uh, adopt policy uh, you know, on its own. The so YCDC cannot uh, adopt policy. Uh, so. Right. so we can receive and file their letter mm -hmm. of recommendation without in any way binding us out on that issue or any issue. I don't see an issue in that in any way that even when a CNC report it comes before uh, the uh, CRA board, the board has capacity to make its own policies. Uh, they are not bound by the uh, CNC report. Thank you. Mr. McDonough, yes. is that issue still pending and, and if so, do you expect it to be coming to? I would assume in the next month or so. Um, the, the question has been what is the substitute amount of square footage and where would they be required to retain retail? And that, that is something, that's, that's the crux of the matter. And so that's, that's what we're going back and forth about because getting input from folks about what's important. Good. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Surely. Councilman Dickfelder. Yes, sir. Um, and, I, and it's funny, uh, thank you, Councilman Dickfelder, for bringing up uh, House Bill 9. I was actually going to ask you about that because I had heard somewhere, I don't know if I read it, and then because I, I, I was just checking up the article that I read on it, does that legislation make it so that if you wish to create a new CRA, you have to get a, a super majority <coughs> approval from the voters? That's not, not from the voters, from the board. From the board? Yes. Okay, very good. Okay. Yes. So, mm -hmm. the, so what is it, two thirds? Correct. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, Mr. Here, uh, in reference to Tampa, I've, I've, I've had a lot of folks talk to me about. It seems like the Tampa Heights CRA is a mere helpmate to the downtown CRA. And many of us were concerned, why was that CRA not extended a little further north to help the folks in Tampa Heights versus basically back a few blocks to help downtown? So I'm just curious of that, how was that developed? Because when I look at that, I'm like, these folks, these residents, they were left out of the deal. And I, I, I'm, I'm looking at that, how we may have to look at revisiting that or looking and going to the mirror and reference to that because the people, the North part of them, have been shortchanged. I, I think that you look at every CRA and you look across the street from the border of every CRA and people will say the same thing. And in this particular case, uh, this happened, I believe it was founded maybe 12, 13 years ago and it was brought to the city as a redevelopment program for a specific piece of property, those 40 acres. And in, in the, at that time frame, the uh, folks felt that it made sense to create that to trigger the redevelopment of those 40 acres of land. Councilman Carlson. Chair, tell me if this is appropriate at this moment, but um, uh, on the issue of the facade grants, um, do you all feel like you're satisfied with the rules that, that are there right now, or do you want to have a discussion at some point to tighten them? And if so, should we schedule it? Or if you yeah, think it's fine, I'm fine. Later, but right? yeah, we got a workshop coming yeah. up later. But if you'd like to make a motion, we'll do that under new business. Okay, we're going to get to that later. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Councilman Digfelder? What was the last point you made? Because I wanted to comment on it. Tampa Heights. Tampa to Heights. That. Yes. The Heights project. And I agree with you completely, Mr. McDonough. I was here then. As, as I think Ms. perhaps Ms. Miranda was, I'm not sure. But um, yes, when we created it, it was 40 acres, a discrete project. It mm -hmm. made sense at the time. Right. Um, that doesn't preclude us from looking and exploring the possibility of expanding that particular CRA, or I guess this should be a question, perhaps for you and legal. Um, we, we, I, I believe we've expanded the boundaries of CRAs, or we have the legal ability to expand the boundaries of CRAs. It has to go through a study to make sure that it's blighted and meets all the other criteria. But if we desired to, we could A, create a new CRA for a certain area, or B, perhaps expand one that exists, uh, legal or Mr. Well, and again, you're going to be looking at the city budget shortly. 
and and it definitely has an impact on the city budget because you're taking. I, that wasn't my question, though, Bob. My question yes, was you can. legally we can yes. revisit that. That's correct. And we can expand those areas if they meet the criteria. The, 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 if they meet the criteria, but the danger is a reset of the base. The whole base. Correct. Which is a you go pro back to, you which go is back part to of the pros and cons of doing it. Correct. As well as the tax implications. Correct. As well. So mm -hmm. I'm just yes. saying from a legal perspective, we have yes. we have the ability to look at Tampa Heights. I'd like to touch on that one more time. To, to my understanding, it is the community that asks first. And CRA and CACs that ask, we ultimately have the decision whether or not to do it, correct? Correct. Thank you. Councilman Carlson. Just to follow up to that, as much as creating them and, and expanding them as, as one option, it, do we have, and pardon my ignorance, do we have some guidelines for when we want to shut these down? Are there it's some goals? Your, it's your discretion. If you wanted to sunset one, you have that ability. And would that happen immediately, or um, excuse me? Would that happen immediately, or what's the timeline for phasing one out? Well, uh, probably the biggest question is: um, Are there any obligations in that particular CRA that need to be taken care of, specifically of debt, or um, a bond, or construction projects that are underway that need to be funded? But that—that's really what you look at. I think, and we can talk about this later, but I think this gets to the, the bigger conversation as we have folks from the community come say, why aren't you spending money in my community? Why aren't you doing these things? We're holding money back in these CRAs, and so we have to have very tight guidelines. We have to justify why we're holding the money back and why we continue to hold it back in the future, and we have to be really careful about how we spend the money to make sure that um, it's, it's, we're using it in uh, as good a uh, position as we would have had we been able to spend it throughout the city. Okay. Jorge, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to go ahead. This March reminds all the board members that in your upcoming meeting, there will be a specific workshop mm -hmm. which will address that specific issue, and that uh, should answer all of the uh, inquiries that you've put forth. Thank you, Council. Okay, South Carolina Legal Department. I didn't catch the slide. So I'm on the edge of our seats now, you know. It's like, <laughs> South Street Legal Department. I didn't catch it because I was in the elevator coming down. I, I heard the questions. I don't know if they were answered dealing with the expansion because the expansion has to go through the county as well. Okay, and then if you did that, then I don't need to say anything more. Thank you. Thank you. Now, are we proceeding? Thank you. Good morning, Jorge Martin, City Attorney's Office, also CRA Attorney. Uh, this morning I've been asked pursuant to your motion to present essentially a primer on CRA board policies and procedures. And what I've done is try to outline uh, for you the policies that are in place and then highlight some of the salient provisions of those policies. Uh, beginning with your bylaws, the CRA structure is created and organized pursuant to the bylaws, and also many of your procedures are going to be found in your bylaws. It is the government document for such operations and structures. Location requires that the principal office of the CRA be with the city clerk, and the records are kept and open for public inspection at the city clerk's office. You have regular meetings and special meetings. Regular meetings are held monthly, and they are held in uh, council chambers pursuant to the bylaws. Special uh, call meetings can be ordered by the chair or four members, or requested by the chair and four members, rather. CRA meetings must comply with Sunshine Law, whether they are regular meetings or special meetings. And a special meeting must be noticed no less than 24 hours prior to the meeting, unless waived by the majority of the board in writing. Lesser notice is still subject to compliance with the subject law. And the only situation that I can envisage, a lesser notice would be an emergency. You still have to give reasonable notice under the Sunshine Law uh, and you cannot avoid the Sunshine Law by scheduling 
a special meeting. Quorum is a majority of the board pursuant to the bylaws. And by the way, in, in the outlines that I presented to you, I've made particular citations or references to each of the articles and sections where you can read this in full. I'm not going to read each provision in full, basically, as I said, provide you the salient points. Uh, an organizational meeting is held annually in April. This year, city uh, officials did not get uh, put in place until May because of the elections. Uh, next year in April, you will have your first <coughs> annual meeting. All CRA action must be adopted by an affirmative vote in less of no less than four board members upon a motion. So sometimes you will address me as a council attorney or my successor and ask us something. And sometimes we demur. Uh, and the reason is we do not answer to any specific board members, but to all of the board members pursuant to an action and a vote. So that, that is what determines what is an action of the CRA as opposed to an individual member's action. Officers and functions. The chair presides over meetings, executes instruments, for example, your facade grants, and appoints committees. Each, uh, the chair and vice chair serve for one year, and the vice chair is, exercises the same function as the chair in the event of absence, disability disqualification. The chair can also delegate all or part of that authority on specific cases uh, for specific reasons. Secretary and assistant secretary are the city clerk and the deputy city clerks in this instance. You have Duane, who serves that function beautifully, if I say so myself. The treasurer functions, function is served by the city's director of finance. The function of the treasurer for the CRA uh, is to keep all financial records, custody of all CRA operating funds. They render a semi-annual budget report and they assist in the preparation of the proposed budgets. Also, whenever the CRA is requested to file reports, all of those are made and with the uh, assistance, if not uh, total participation of uh, director of finance office. Staff. Staff support is provided by city staff and departments as provided in annual service agreements. This is part of your bylaws. And there has been a discussion recently on whether outsourcing of your staff is possible. Uh, under the law, yes. Under the bylaws, you will require an amendment. Fiscal management. Uh, basically. Excuse me, counsel. Yes. One second, we have a question. I think this is a really, I know we're having a workshop on this in a week or so, but uh, I think this is a really important uh, area, the staff area. So can the, just to, just to clarify under, under state law, this, can we as the CRA uh, hire staff? And, and, and the, the media misinterpreted, I think, some of our discussions about outsourcing as if we were going to give it to a nonprofit or something like that. But is it is it possible for the, the CRA itself to have staff that are separate from city staff? Yes. However, you have two things that limit that at this moment. One of them is the bylaws. So if you were to choose to outsource any function, your bylaws would have to but be. But it's not outsourcing if we're hiring staff as a CRA, right? And, and you may, when I say outsource, it's outsource from the city. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were to hire staff, you would have because right now we're outsourcing to the city, so we would stop outsourcing if Correct. the CRA had its own staff. Uh, I, I'm not using that as a technical mm -hmm. term. Just a, because the media term. is probably watching and they misunderstood before, I want to make it clear that it, the are there other CRAs God, in the... I hope the media is watching my <laughs> presentation. But I'm sure they are. <laughs> if, if the, um, it, are there other CRAs in the state that have staff that are separate from, that are not outsourced to a city department? I, I asked one of our interns, was it... Uh, no, we lost our intern and uh, that did CRA research. As a matter of fact, I think you will receive uh, I mean, per, Tyler's per memorandum. And uh, apparently there are a few that do, if not all functions, some functions. Two. Which ones are they? Oh, they're down in South Florida. Yeah, smaller ones. Um, Delray Beach, I believe, is one of them. Delray. And they hire independent contractors. 
who then hire other independent contractors to perform certain tasks for the CRA board. Are there any are there any state guidelines that that uh, uh, push us to to outsource to the city versus any other, versus having our own staff versus outsourcing to another group? It's not in Chapter 163, and that's what uh, dictates how the money is spent. The reason that most of them do it is because of efficiencies. They find it a, a, a way of leveraging the CRA dollars and getting more bang for their buck. Do you need, so that's under the, the that's what this presentation on the eighth will be. Yeah, under the new charter uh, amendments that we put through, we we remember we clarified uh, that that city council could hire its own staff. Um, uh, it, depending on the budget, we could we could move around. Remember that whole discussion where we could move around. Um, is it are there CRAs where where city council hire city council staff, uh, outsource to city council staff instead of outsourcing to administration staff? Do we know that? Not that I'm aware of. As I said, there are two CRAs within the within the state that do that, and they hire independent contractors, companies that are basically a shell corporation who go ahead and go ahead and hire independent contractors. But again. On this subject, I prefer that you wait until the 8th, so I'm ready to give okay. a comprehensive Thank presentation. You. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Councilman Goose? Well, well, we'll wait, but I think uh, where Mr. Carlson is going, a lot of the communities who do have CR, who have CAC boards feel that uh, staff doesn't really listen to them at times. They're listening to the administration, and I think the CAC and CR was created for the, the community to advocate what they want versus what maybe staff may want. So I guess the, the question comes down to who does the, the CEC or who does staff take orders or take uh, leads from would be my question. CRA board uses city staff as its staff. The CRA board directs city staff for CRA functions. Whatever you want the CRA uh, a pursuant to motion, whatever, whatever you adopt, you can direct staff to take steps to uh, achieve those uh, ends. One quick question. <laughs> Let's get just, back just, just a quick comment. Um, just so everybody knows where I'm coming from, uh, you know, we heard, we've heard a lot of complaints about the last administration. This administration, I think, is being widely praised, and and uh, I like the things that this administration is doing. So my questions have nothing to do with the the mayor or the administration. It's more that uh, we have the fiduciary responsibility to manage this, um, but in but what we actually do is is approve budgets just like we approve everything else. So it's not. The, the, the CRA in, in name feels is a separate entity, but what it feels like is just any other ordinary um, approval process. Councilman Dinkfelder. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as related to a few of your comments, uh, Jorge, the, um, when you say we need to amend the bylaws, okay, it sounds very ominous, but it's no big deal. No, we did. I mean, it's. I mean, yes, we had to be in a sunshine meeting and you know that sort of thing. But it's not like uh, it's not like we have to go to Tallahassee and ask permission. No. Okay. The, the, the only reason I point that out is because we're having this discussion, yeah. and you should be aware that in the bylaws, we've already built in city staff. If you choose otherwise, you right. need to. I think rec that. I think recently we amended the bylaws as related to the. Makeup of a CAC. But, you you know, know, that's the, the, the bylaws, and as any corporate bylaws, can be uh, yeah. amended. And it's but I didn't want it to sound ominous, um, no matter what we do. The other question I have, which is sort of a, a little ticklish one, and don't take it personally because you've done a great job for us for years. The reason we, that City Council six, 15 years ago put Mr. Shelby in that seat as City Council attorney. Part, part of the reason was on occasion uh, we, we, this, this body might have a conflict or potential conflict or perceived conflict with the administration. So we wanted our own attorney who only answered to us, okay? Um, and that's why Mr. Shelby has been and, and is there and is a very valuable asset uh, in that position to this body. My question sort of comes along that same lines with us as the CRA. I think, like I said, you've always done a great job for us. Mr. Torita has done a great job for us over the years uh, in, this, in the similar capacity. But 
On occasion, there is a little bit of tension potentially between what the CRA desires and what the admin and any administration desires as, the, as our contractor, let's say. Um, and we feel that tension sometimes. So my question is, uh, is it possible that we could have Mr. Shelby um, sit as our, the CRA's advisor, and then you and the city attorney's office would do what you do now, which is sit out there working on with the staff and working on behalf of the staff and doing the, the nitty-gritty details of the day-to-day -day work? It's an interesting question because when we act as city attorneys or Martin Shelby as as council attorneys, you have an area where the administration and city council play a role. In this instance, we serve only the board. The administration does not have a seat in your board. The mayor does not play a part in the decisions of the board. Correct. It may have input, the same as any CAC or other member. But in the particular instance of a CRA board, you don't have that tension. I answer only to you. And as I said, acting in motion with votes. So whatever your directives, we are not going to uh, have any input or any direction on policy or on procedure or in establishing contracts or anything other than you, But the weird not the administration. I agree with you in theory, in legal theory, in legal ethical theory. Right. Okay. However, the practical reality is, is that all day long, you work for the mayor. Um, you being the office of the city attorney. You work for the mayor. And then once a month, you come in and you say, I'm changing hats, and you just answer to this body. So it's a little bit strange, a little bit, of, it's not like you're outside counsel and it's that easy. It's like you said, you're a salary guy. And do, do we pay your salary? Uh, no. Right. The city pays your salary. The, the mayor pays your salary. The mayor decides who the city attorney is, et cetera. All right. I've spoken long enough as, on it. As I think a matter of I, ethics, I, 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 I think the, every attorney that sits in that seat would, as a matter of ethics, understand the distinction of who his client is. I and think the majority where the these, responsibilities lie. Excuse me. I think the majority of these questions can be answered at our workshop. If you would like to uh, to ask them, then I, I, I think sure. we're, we're we can, getting we, a little off track. We can at this, pursue at this point. We can pursue that. Then. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you, uh, Mr. McDonough. You wanted to say one thing. Just one point. Um, at one point, when before the downturn in the economy. The actual, there, there was a contribution from the CRA funds towards the city attorney to cover that overhead. And when there was a downturn in the economy, the administration said, look, let's keep as much money going to the CRAs as possible and, and no longer ask for or require the contribution for the overhead for city's attorney's office. I, I think uh, I think we have city attorney here to, yeah, I, to I, make I, a statement. Please proceed. Really Again, I didn't catch everything. Two things. The city attorney's office does not work for the mayor. The city attorney is the general counsel for the entire city. Thank you me. are our client. They are our client. The second thing, we're here not to make policy. You and I have had this discussion in the past. You pulled me out of a meeting 12 years ago. Do I have a conflict of interest? And the answer I gave you was no. I'm not making policy. He's not making policy. Whatever the decision is, it's going to be the same for you, for the mayor, anybody else in the city. Our job is to give you legal advice, not policy decisions. If there's a conflict, and I told you the same thing before, I will recuse myself, he will recuse himself. But the chances of a conflict coming up are fairly rare because we're not giving you policy decisions. You ask for a legal decision, opinion, it's going to be the same to you as to anybody else in the city. It's based on what we think the law is, not what you want, not what the mayor wants, not what the city council wants, not what a department head wants. That is not what happens here. The city attorney's office is general counsel. When we sit with you, you ask us the legal opinions, we give it to you. If it's in con conflict with the administration wants, so be it. But that's what you're going to get from us, no matter what capacity we're here. 
you're an attorney, we have legal obligations, we have ethical obligations. We're not going to play games and say, I'm going to take this position, that position. We don't make policy. You make policy. The administration makes policy. The city council makes policy. That is not going to happen. I know it's a concern you have, and I understand it, but it's not quite as simple as that. And That's all I want to say. Okay. It seemed to be directed at me. I, I believe you no, was, but you're, you're the one. I'm, I don't mean no, to make it. It I'm seemed to, to be directed at I, me. I, he I, said, I'm, I'm quote, trying, "You're an attorney." No. I don't think he was I'm not to trying. Mr. I'm, you're the ones that brought the question up, so I'm answering you. I apologize. <clears throat> cool heads will prevail. If Councilman Dinkfeld, if you wish to rebuttal, but however, we are still going to have a workshop on this. I think a lot of your questions will be answered. Your concerns are very important, so if you deem it necessary to rebuttal, please do. But let's get back on track, gentlemen, please. Okay. Mr. Torita, I'm glad to contribute to your exercise program of running up and down the stairs. Um, I respectfully disagree, and we'll talk more. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I, Councilman Carlson. I respectfully disagree also, and maybe we should have a workshop on this uh, once we get the new city attorney. Perfect. All right, gentlemen, are we... Ready to continue? Yes, sir. May I ask a question here? I haven't said one word to home either. We sit <laughs> as city council members and we also sit as the CRA, correct? Correct. Now, this afternoon we've been working with the city budget. Now we're working with the CRA budget. Is there a conflict? It's the same thing we're asking them. No. Your CRA budget is your CRA budget, your city council. And to mind you of that, last year, $25 million would have gone completely to the city of Tampa's coffers and the general fund if there were no CRAs. Anybody want to challenge? Come on up. Please continue, Council. Okay, I think I lost my place. I believe you were on the um, staff. Okay. That's where we ended was with staff. Staff. And I think the next uh, point that we go to is fiscal management. Key dates for fiscal management is your fiscal year, which begins October the 1st. And at that time, CRA must approve them forward to the city proposed budget before November the 1st. Reports under Article uh, 7, Section 4, are required on or before March 31st of each year. The CRA must file with the city clerk and the Auditor General a report for its activities during the previous years and including comprehensive financial statement. Concurrent published notice of location and availability of inspection is required. In addition, uh, as Mr. McDonough said, we meet all of the requirements of the new legislation because we provide this information both to the public and also to the county and other local agencies. Article 7, Section 5 requires a post audit of accounts and records of the CRA, and it must be prepared at the end of each fiscal year uh, by an independent CPA. Expenditures of by the CRA basically are prohibited unless they are in accordance with the adopted CRA budget agreements and plans. Uh, I think earlier on we had a discussion about the plans coming forward and uh, what allows, for example, the expenditures for facade grants. If it's in the plan, you can do it. If it's not in the plan, you can't. Budget and TIF reimbursements. Can I have a uh, question on that before we move on to the next item? Please, Mr. Uh, Councilman Dickfelder. Just in terms of process, and I apologize right. for forgetting after my eight year absence. Um, what is our process for the CRA in terms of the, the upcoming budget? Are we going to have, and this might be to Mr. McDonough as well, are we going to have separate uh, workshop? Uh, specifically related to our, this budget for this body. Uh, um, I recall sometimes the mayor's presentation includes the uh, city budget with the CRA no, budget. No, that, we, we it, again, completely bifurcated. We do a separate presentation. Uh, 
you sitting as the CRA board uh, opine and adopt the budget. And when is that? Uh, it will be in September. Okay, so wouldn't, wouldn't it be wise, and, and I'll raise this at New Business, Mr. Chairman, but that we um, have a workshop uh, as opposed to that September time period gets crazy and doesn't give you a lot of latitude in terms of making changes, that maybe we should add that to our August agenda to, to workshop that budget that draft budget. Well, the, the, the one caveat is that I am not sure that all of the um, CACs have adopted their or pro-offered a budget to bring to the uh, CRA board. Again, we just got the certified role not that long ago, but I can get back with you and let you know if that everybody has uh, finished I'll their budget. I'll bring it up in new business. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank yeah. you. Council, please continue. Budget and TIF reimbursements. Uh, governed by separate policy uh, pronouncement. It's attached to your packet. Uh, and again, I'm only focusing on salient points, not going through the whole thing. Uh, the financial administration policy was adopted on April 2005, establishes the participation and cooperation with CACs and staff to de develop proposed annual work programs and budget. This is basically the uh, preamble to your budget. You go out to the CACs, you go out to the public, you find out priorities, they come back and become policy. And this is reflected on that financial administrative policy. Uh, that policy also identifies the city out-of-pocket expenses that are reimbursable from TIF funds in connection with CRA areas created after 2004. It also creates the procedures for the accurate documentation of ongoing operating expenses and reimbursement to the city from TIF. So that basically, that policy governs what the city recovers uh, from TIF uh, uh, as a result of services provided or uh, uh, facilities provided. The borrowing policy uh, is covered by uh, the TIF borrowing and major projects policy adopted in 2007. It describes the general conditions for obtaining financing for CRA infrastructure and economic development projects. The emphasis is on reliance of CRA TIF credits. It prohibits the pledge of general funds, utility, or other revenues from the city to support or pledge to that financing. And it describes the special conditions where departure from the general conditions may be considered. In some instances, for example, during a recession where there may be no income coming into a CRA area. Next item is CRA CAC relationship policy, and I think this is something that we started to discuss. The CRA CAC relationship policy um, was instituted in 2009, and I was not. CRA uh, attorney at that time, but uh, what I have learned uh, about it is that there was a perception by the CACs that oftentimes a member of the CRA or a member of city council would appear before them and possibly state positions or try to influence the conversation that CAC was having with the public. The idea for the CAC is to get information from the bottom up. And what they wanted to avoid in creating this policy is information going from the top down. That either members of the public or members of the CIC would be swayed by what a policy maker was telling them or advocating for. So this policy establishes those procedures that govern the interactions between the CRA and the CAC members and appearances at CAC meetings. It defines the relationship between the CRA and CAC when obtaining public input to ensure the proper scope of each actor and avoid sunshine law implications. Creates the procedures for invitations to CRA, CRA members to attend CAC meetings and requires report of communications to CRA board. That is something I want to emphasize because I, I don't know that we are adhering to that, but we should. Whenever a CRA uh, member attends a CAC meeting, Oftentimes, I do not hear the ones that I've been present any conversation between the CRA member and either the CAC board or the public. 
should there be one. This policy creates an obligation to come back at the next CRA meeting, such as what you're holding today, and report not your conversation exactly, but on the substance of that conversation. What did you speak about? What, if anything, was an outcome? So I want you to keep that in mind. You're going to go in to some depth next week in your workshop, but again, as you move forward, as you evaluate your policies, that's something you should be aware of. I wanted to also point out something that was brought to my attention by Mr. Torito. There is almost an apparent conflict between Article 2 and Article, Article 2.1 and 2.7 of your bylaws. The way I read it, I don't see it so much in conflict. Article 1 speaks to initial organizational meetings, and in that instance, the CRA shows its own officers. Number 7 basically states that the provisions of Part 2 of Chapter 163, Florida Statute 2007, the chairman and vice chairman shall be appointed by the city council of the city of Tampa. So other than in any instance where an initial meeting applies, your current uh, policy uh, or current procedure of having the chair and vice chair chosen by council is applicable and is covered by number seven. If you think that there's any clarification that needs to be made, again, at any time you can amend your bylaws. And that's all I have. I have one last quick question. Sure. And I'll, and I'll put three words out there. Does, can, should. Does the council for this CRA board also represent and or advise staff of CRAs and CDCs? Can they? The CRA. Does it or should it? The CRA staff comes to uh, the CRA attorney for CRA matters. Uh, so to the extent uh, that members of staff, such as Mr. McDonough at Johnson, come to me, it's on a CRA matter as their CRA attorney. I also deal with the board directly, but it's uh, the same as a corporation. My uh, counsel goes both to the head and management as well as to operational staff. Thank you. Councilman Dinkler. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, in the bylaws on page six, uh, item five speaks to audit. Um, and I do recall seeing sort of a standardized uh, audit, um, I guess, either once or twice a year. What, I'm, what I was wondering about was um, in the city, we, I know the city has internal performance audits. Um, is that something to your recollection that uh, that uh, the CRA does or has done in the past? I see Mr. McDonough heading. Not here. within my experience, but that wouldn't be in the area of legal expertise. So I would defer to Mr. McDonough. I can address that. Yes, uh, the internal audit group has looked at us and do so every few years as well as on an annual basis, the city has external auditors who audit the city's books as well as the CRAs. Right. So that is done annually. Yeah, and, and, and I'm familiar with the outside audit, audit that's extremely important to make sure the money is where the money should be and, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. The performance audits, as you know, Bob, because I'm sure you're subject to them with your other hat, mm -hmm. um, are a lot more detailed in, ter in terms of looking at the staff saying this is what the staff says they're going to do is this what the staff is actually doing mm -hmm. etc um i don't remember ever seeing those with the CRA. let me see if i can't find one because i believe there's there ha there's one, been one done in the last three or four years that's probably why i haven't seen it yeah thank you mm -hmm. thank you jorge for your presentation one last announcement this is my last month appearing before you as CRA Council. Beginning in August, there will be a new CRA attorney appointed. I thank you for the opportunity to serve the CRA. 
I hope that my tenure here has resulted in some good. I certainly tried to do some uh, uh, improvements over what I inherited, but I inherited a very uh, uh, stable entity uh, from Sal Torito. So uh, he's also been invaluable to me as far as his experience and his historical knowledge is concerned. So again, uh, my last appearance before you wearing my council hat, I know I will be seeing you all as uh, I continue my functions as an assistant city attorney. Any statements? Don't go away. Any well, statements well, or uh, questions? Yeah, I, you know, uh, he's helped me out tremendously with a few issues that we've come across and we'll bring them up through the workshop and I appreciate you for taking the time stopping in and give me some advice on the things some leadership so I want to say uh, good luck to you on your next assignment thank you if I may um if I may uh, or get, 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 get back up there. I know I just you. just wanted to publicly say thank you I for all your keep work making a quick ghetto, uh, you guys pull me back I, I just wanted to publicly say thank you for all your work a lot of the things that you do I'm, I'm a, obviously an attorney and, and I, I I see a lot of your um, wheels wheels spinning and whatnot, and I know what it feels like to have those wheels spinning. So just thank you for your work. And you are not just a gentleman, but more importantly, you are a caballero. So thank you. Muchas gracias. Got some dick Jorge. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, we've known each other, worked with each other for many, many years, and I appreciate your service as well to the CRA as well as the city. I hope you're not leaving the city. No. Okay, good. No, just, just the CRA uh, appointment. Okay. And I also want to say personally that any comments I've, that I've had today or any other day as related to the process or the relationship or the ethical issues are never directly related to you or personal in any way, and I'm sure you know that. No offense taken. Thank you. I, I just wanted to state for the record that as attorneys, and several of you are attorneys, you know, one of our functions or our ethical duties is to know who our client is. Yep. And I, I think that I, I'm a few instances where any of the staff of the city attorney's office uh, has failed to do that. So. Council call. Thank I, you. Thank I, you again. I haven't been here long. I haven't worked with you very long, but I've appreciated all the time and help that you've given as well. So thank you so much and look thank forward you. to working with you in other capacities. Council, you and I have known each other for over 16 years. <laughs> yes. You brought me up through civil service board. You brought me up through... Uh, Code Enforcement Board is a magistrate, right. magistrate, and you have given me many, many years of advice. Um, I thank you for everything that you have taught me and the respect you've shown me in all my duties that I've had with this city. It's been a pleasure working with you. Well, it's two-way street. I've learned from you all and individually from, from several of you. Charlie is a fountain of, of, of wisdom for me. Legend. And, and his historical knowledge of, uh, of city uh, history and politics is invaluable. But uh, I, I, I love the opportunity to serve, and I hope that uh, I've done that well for you. Get back up here. We've got a couple more things we've got to do. All right. Councilman Dingfelder, I think you have to, excuse me, I'm sure you have to redo a motion setting a date. So they say. Um, so my original motion. Uh, that a representative from the legal department and city CRA staff be requested to appear before the CRA board to report on the legalities and possibilities of the city of Tampa CRA using alternate providers, e.g. nonprofits, selected by an RFP to manage some or all of the CRA districts, and to report on the cost uh, to the rest of the city of maintaining CRAs and on the possibility of sunsetting a CRA once it's no longer needed, be specifically set to our next CRA meeting of August 8th. I believe uh, Councilman Maniscalco seconded that motion. However, he's not here. Would somebody else Second. like? We have a motion to be made by Councilman Dingfelder, seconded by Councilman Goods. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. And will you entertain one other item? Give are it out. In, are we in new business? Uh, not, not quite yet. Okay, I'll wait. Thank you. Um, Council. Jorge. We've got this to discuss. Do you want to bring this up to us? Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, during our last meeting, a policy was amended concerning uh, service by CIC chair. Uh, as a oversight, clerical oversight, we were working off of a work document that wasn't the most recent document. And as a result, the exhibit was not 
the latest exhibit available. And so one of the, uh, I think it was West Tampa was unintentionally omitted from that exhibit. We have, we would like at this point, uh, by motion, to have that exhibit substituted for the correct one. So moved. Second. So we have a motion made, duly made by Councilman Vieira, second by Councilman Goods. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Let's go to new business, Councilman Dinkle. Oh, just picking up on where we were a minute ago. Um, a budget workshop to um, address the tentative budget, uh, Mr. McDonough, and, and obviously if a CAC hasn't voted on it, I think we can still workshop it in a draft form. Yes. Um, there, I'm sure that if, the, if it's getting this close to the time period, I'm sure there must be good solid drafts around. So I'd like to, if, if August 8th is, is our next meeting, uh, if that's adequate time to workshop, the okay. budget, proposed budget. I'd like to do it then. If not, we can set a special meeting. But let's see if we, let's shoot for the eighth, please, so we can do it all at one time. So moved. We have a motion made by Councilman Dinkfelder, seconded by Councilman Goods. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any other motions? Any interest in having a discussion about mm -hmm. uh, the scope of uh, yes. the side grants? Yes. I'd like to make a motion on that. We'll see where it goes. <laughs> I, uh, I'd like to make a motion that we have a discussion or workshop on um, narrowing the scope of facade grants. Todd, you want to do it in September or something? Whenever we can schedule it. Give us a time on that, please, if you would. When is the next avail available time for that? September? Our next meeting? Should we see if anybody's interested first? You want to do it in August? Uh, that'd be great. My, my idea is not to kill the facade grants. It's just to try to narrow the scope so that the money's going to uh, places that... Can that be done? I, I, I don't mean to interrupt. Can that be done during our workshop? It's a question, yeah. question and yeah. answer. Yeah. I think so it would we be really don't scope. need a different yeah. workshop for it. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll second it for August 8th. Okay. So uh, we're not going to do it during the workshop we already have. So, okay. There's a motion made by Councilman uh, uh, Carlson. Okay. Seconded by Councilman Dinkfelder. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Again, that could have been done during the workshop, in my opinion. But the motion's already done passed. Okay. Okay. It adds an extra agenda to the workshop. Okay, uh, information reports and new businesses. Let's start on the left. Councilman Carlson. Councilman Hi, Miranda. Mr. Chairman. Nothing, sir. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, All right, motion to receive and file and receive. Second. Motion's been made by Councilman uh, Miranda, oh. seconded by Councilman Goods. All in favor say aye. aye. We are in adjournment until 6 o'clock tonight. Six. So it's a 6. Okay, good.